Hi guys, uh, good morning. Uh, today we will start up with this AWS uh, DevOps examination preparation. So we will see uh, today what is DevOps. So, so far we have covered a lot of concepts that has been related to DevOps and today we are going to see the certification preparation uh, for a DevOps course. So before going into DevOps, uh, let me show you what is DevOps and how DevOps is used in AWS for a better performance. Yes, what is DevOps? A software development life cycle. So it is like a delivery pipeline which has built building an infrastructure. The developers who are involved in DevOps and they are going to do both operational works and development works. So the software development lifecycle build, test and release. So first build an environment, then test an environment whether the environment is working properly or not, then the release the environment to the customers. And after that we are going to monitor it and plan it so how the things are working and we are going to configure those alerts and we are going to start monitoring. So this is DevOps. DevOps is nothing but development plus operations. So uh, previously we have, we have different set of peoples and different group of peoples who are working for a development of an environment and who are doing the operations. Now to decrease the resources and give the resources a more visibility on, on how development and operations are working. So uh, a new technology called DevOps has been introduced which will be developing the environment and will be working on the environment uh, to configure and after configuration we will test this environment and we will release the environment to the customers. After releasing the environment then we will take up the monitoring and we will plan according to the monitoring how, how the environment is working and we will make changes. So these are the uh, basic uh, structure of DevOps. So DevOps is equal to efficiencies that speed up this life cycle. So DevOps is nothing but the efficiency that is speeding up this life cycle to more and more uh, in a precise way. So what is DevOps in AWS? So AWS provides a set of flexible services designed to enable companies to more rapidly and reliably build and deliver products using AWS and DevOps practices. So only AWS is different and the DevOps practices are different. So AWS is giving you a DevOps practice which helps the customers to provide AWS a set of flexible services designed to enable companies more, more rapidly and reliably build and deliver products. So these services simplify provisioning and managing infrastructure, deploying application code, automating software release process and monitoring your application and infrastructure performance. So everything we are going to do, we are going to do end to end support. That's what usually they will say in infra, infrastructure uh, side. So we are going to do end to end support, we are going to build an environment, we are going to configure those environment and deploy those uh, using an application code and automate the software releasing processes, monitoring your application and infrastructure performance and we are going to support the infrastructure in all the ways. So DevOps is a combination of cultural philosophies, practices and tools that so DevOps in AWS we are seeing. So DevOps is a combination of cultural philosophies, practices and tools that increase an organization ability to deliver applications and services at high velocity. So using before DevOps we used to manually uh, configure those instances in AWS when DevOps came into picture. We have moved everything into a script. So either, either we will be using Chef Puppet or JSON uh, for, for scripting. So Chef Puppet works on Puppet works on Perl and, and Chef works on Python. So like this we are using different type of scripting languages even to deploy uh, instance we have a script. So we can write a script and if we insert the script in the cloud formation stack we can run the script so that uh, an instance will be deployed. So by this we are decreasing the amount of time that is taken to manually uh, provision an instance. So not only an instance you can deploy application code automate as software also. So this uh, ability uh, gives us the application to deliver the services at a high velocity at a high speed. Evolving and improving product is faster pace than organization using traditional software development and infrastructure management process. So uh, instead of following the traditional uh, infrastructure management process, so DevOps gives you 
uh, speed up process or a high velocity process that makes you to speed up your um, practices using different kinds of tools. So this speed enables organization to better serve their customers and compete more efficiently in the market. So if the customers, if we are serving customers in a more rapid and high velocity way, so they will be ha having more competition. So they can uh, compete those competitors inside the market and they can come up with uh, different technologies in a very less period of time. So features of DevOps. So DevOps, we will see what are the features that are getting uh, used or we can use of the, we can use of these features in DevOps. So get started fast. So as I said, each AWS source is ready to use if you have an AWS account. There is no setup required or software to install. So AWS is helping DevOps in these kinds of ways. So every service is ready to use if you have an AWS account. As I said in the previous sessions, we don't want to configure or don't want to install anything. Just the services are available, use the services and pay as you go. So there is no setup or software record, uh, record. even licensing or software is not required. So fully managed service. These services can help you take advantage of AWS resources quicker. You can worry less about setting up, installing and operating infrastructure on your own. This lets you focus on your core product. So if there are some applications such as Informatica or such as Tableau or such as which sense of people you are running inside your AWS services, you need not to think of your AWS resources because you have already configured those instances and you have built an application on those instances. So you need not to worry about maintaining the infra part and you can focus more on your core product which is your core product of the client. For example, Informatica may be a core product for data analytics. So uh, for Hadoop or Hot on or something like that. So built for scale. You can manage a single instance or scale to thousand using AWS services. So using uh, the scale in and scale out. That is the scalability and elasticity. So we are going to see about scalability and elasticity because that is the main uh, topic that has been covered for AWS DevOps certification. So built for scalability. You can manage a single instance or scale of 2000 instances using AWS resources. These services helps you to helps you make the most of flexible compute resources by simply paying provisioning, configuration, and scaling. So you can manage a single instance or scale to thousand instances using AWS services. So what they are uh, specifying here is these services help you to make most of flexible compute. So flexible compute is nothing but giving more resources to a sim, sim, single compute instance in a flexible manner. So you are just adding up those, you can even you can add up your resource or even you can scale out your instances by simply provisioning, configuring and scaling. So, so a large partner ecosystem. So AWS supports a large ecosystem of partners which integrate with and extend AWS services. So use your preferred third party and open source tool with AWS to build an end to end solution visit here. So what they are saying is large partner ecosystem. Partner ecosystem is for example as I said we can use Chef, Puppet, Maven. We have a lot of tools for uh, configuring this AWS services. So the partners ecosystem is very large so you can tie up with any of those partners and you can provision or configure or you can use their tools uh, for building up an infrastructure. So as you go with AWS project services, as uh, this this is the basic concept of AWS, and this is why AWS is evolving in the environment. So pay as you go is nothing but with AWS project services, as you need them and only for the period when you plan to use them. So whenever you plan to use them, you need them. So AWS pricing has no upfront fees, as I said, no upfront fees and no investment, and nothing can be. Um, Invested and the uh, amount can be laid in front. So, a uh, termination penalties is also not there, or long term contracts is also not there. The AWS free tier helps you to get started with AWS. We have a lot of pricing of we saw in the earlier classes. So, which is then programmable. You have an option to use each service via the AWS command line. As I said, you can use the AWS command line and you can use either YAML or JSON scripting uh, and you can use 
uh, through APIs. Uh, uh, you know what is API and SDK, SDK software development, any software development kits. So you can also model and provision AWS resources under the entire AWS infrastructure using declarative AWS cloud formation templates. So what are these cloud formation templates we will see in the future classes. So cloud formation template is nothing that um, the whole infrastructure can be made into a template and if we start uh, push the template in the stack and if we run the template the whole uh, instances will be formed with uh, the whole infrastructures can be provisioned using this cloud formation template. So automation. AWS helps you use automation so you can build faster and more efficiently. Using AWS services you can automate manual tasks. So either this cloud formation template is also kind of automation. So you can automate manual tasks or process such as deployments, development and test workflows, container management and configuration management. So container dockers and containers is different technology. So uh, those are, those are uh, same as multiple VMs are stacked inside a single VM. That's what docker and container technology is about. So we'll see about that in the future classes. Secure, use AWS identity and access management to you to set your user permissions and policies. As you said, as we know already, AWS identity and access management like AEM is used to uh, give user permissions and policies. This, gives you granular control over who can access your resources and how they access other resources. So this gives you a control list specifying who and all can access your resources and who and all cannot access your resources. So when we are talking about AWS DevOps, these elasticity and scalability are the main concepts uh, that are uh, that are ref as, uh, as referenced by AWS in the uh, DevOps examination. So we will have a lot of uh, exam questions from elasticity and scalability. So what is elasticity? Elasticity is nothing but if you think of a rubber band, elasticity allows you to stretch out and retract back with particular based on your demand. It's nothing but like a rubber band. If you want to stretch it, if you want to give it a maximum size, you can give it a maximum size by stretching it. And if you want a minimum size, if you release the stretch, then it will get back to its, its own state. That is retract back your infrastructure, add back your infrastructure as it was before. So based on your demand, on your demand this elasticity you can expand or it can uh, retract back. So under this model you only pay for what you need as I said in freeware in AWS you are going to pay what you are going to use and if, if what you are going to use is basically or obviously that the need from your side is the things that you are going to use. So elasticity is used during a short time period such as harsh hour days even it can be used for a single day or a half. As I said, for big billion days, Flipkart is using elasticity or auto scaling or for uh, like that, I am saying. Just a sample uh, example I am giving. And scalability. Scalability is used to talk about building out the infrastructure to meet your demand long term. So, elasticity is for a temporary short period of time and scalability is used to build out the infrastructure to meet your demands for long term. Scalability is used over longer time periods such as weeks, days, months and years. So that is scalability. So this is the main difference of elasticity and scalability. Kindly keep a note of it and these questions are asked in DevOps examination of AWS. So uh, I'll, I'll repeat it once again. So what is elasticity? Elasticity is nothing that using of a resources or an infrastructure to based on your demand to a maximum size and attacking back to, uh, to your original size for a shorter period of time such as harsh hard days and scalability is nothing but used over long period of times the simple both are same you are expanding your infrastructure or you are stretching your infrastructure and attracting it back stretching your infrastructure and attracting it back to in a short period of time is known as elasticity and stretching your infrastructure you are retracting and retracting it back or searching the infrastructure for a long period of time such as weeks, days, months and years it is known as scalability. So, uh, how elasticity works in AWS? So, we see to scalability increase instance sizes as required using reserved instances. Elasticity uh, scalability is increase instance sizes as required. And elasticity is increase the number of EC2 instances based on auto scaling. So we'll see what is auto scaling and how to configure auto scaling in EC2 instances in a video in the upcoming slides. So what is scalability is increase instance sizes as required. So as as I said, uh, scalability 
yes for permanent time or for a longer period of time for example as days weeks months and years and elasticity is for shorter period of time for example hours or days so uh, easy to scalability so increase instances sizes as required using reserved instances we have different types of instances as you know we have seen lot of uh, instance types in a class that has been taken along that and elasticity is into elasticity of an ec2 instance is nothing but elasticity increase the number of ec2 instances based on auto scaling so based on auto scaling you can increase the number of instances and you can scale in and scale out uh, so dynamo db so database so scalability unlimited amount of storage can be used in scalability and elasticity of dynamo db increase the additional input output per second for additional spikes in traffic decrease the input output per second after the spike that can be used elasticity in dynamo db and rts is scalability increase instance size example from small to medium you can increase the instance size and elasticity not very elastic can't scale rds based on demand so rds cannot be scaled on demand once it is configured it is configured so um, as we are speaking up what is scale up and scale out scale up is uh, increasing your uh, scalability vertically and vertically in a sense upwards the uh, and scale out is increasing your instance increasing your resources horizontally so as this example it is given traditional it increases the number of processes number of ram and amount of storage so increasing vertically is nothing that think of a box of a cpu so it has uh, n number of resources a example cpu it has ram it has storage it has graphic card it has so uh, if you are scaling scaling up means you are increasing the number of processes or number of ram or the amount of storage or the and uh, the extra number of uh, network nic cards or the graphic ports etc so that is scale up if you are increasing the number of resources inside your instance or inside your systems that is scale up so ec2 increases the instance type from say t1 micro to t2 small or t2 medium etc so we are having multiple processes multiple cpus inside adding up on keep on adding up on cpus inside your system is scale up and scale out is traditionally adding more resources if you are going to add extra servers to your already in an in an environment you are going to add extra servers is scale up so example is additional ec2 instances and using auto scale so additional ec2 instances so using ec2 instances you can add additional ec2 instances for example if you have one ec2 instances you can add another ec2 instances in same configuration or different configuration or from a different um, instance type so that is scale up so rds multi availability failover so why am i uh, concentrating more on these topics these topics are important for devops examination so i am making it more and more important so kindly note these types of uh, questions will be asked for aws devops examination so what is elasticity what is scalability and how elasticity and scalability works and what is scale up and what is scale out so these are uh, in auto scaling it will be the questions will be asked in the section of auto scaling so then uh, what is this uh, rds multi az failover so this we are going to see now so multi az uh, failover deployments for msql oracle and post sql engines utilize synchronous physical replication to keep the data on the standby up to date with the primary so uh, it, 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 it's nothing but a multi availability deployments of mysql oracle and post sql engines utilize synchronous physical replication so continuously the physical replication will be happening to keep the data that that is in the primary uh, on the standby so we have two types of resources primary and standby what is primary is um, that is that is the main database and standby is like supporting the primary database so but both will have the same kind of data and the data will be replicated and the data will be always kept safe safe uh, in standby so what are the data that are getting allocated in primary the same data should be replicated and they are stored in standby for um, uh, more available available availability should be given for data so if this uh, primary is down then the traffic will be redirected and it will be sent to the standby
multi az deployments for sql server engine using synchronous logical replication to achieve the same result so if you are replicating the data so the data will be saved if the primary uh, uh, employee sql uh, server native mirroring technology mirroring is nothing but if you keep a mirror opposite to you you will be seeing the same exactly the same replication so that is the same thing they will be keeping a mirror uh, mirroring is nothing but replicating the data same to uh, in any other location both approaches safeguard your data in the event of database instant failures or loss or loss of your and availability as i said if the if the availability in uh, if we are keeping in a database instances in chat partner and some something because of cyclone or because of some floods it has been affected then the same or application of that is kept in hyderabad so that will start work, working up and this even if the availability one availability is low instant loss so rds multi aid failover advantages so what are the advantages of multi aid failover is high availability as i said uh, whenever you want the data is the data is even if some data centers are affected this data will be available backups are taken from secondary which avoids input or output suspension to the primary so uh, restore are taken from secondary which avoids input or output suspension to the primary so backups are taken from the secondary you do not want to touch on the primary as the same data are replicated in the secondary and restore you can also restore the session or the system from the second day itself you do not touch text the primary so a small example if you can force a failover from one availability zone to another by rebooting your instances this can be done through the aws management control or by using reboot db instance api call so you can force a failover force a failover is you can manually making a failover if you shut down this instance or reboot this instance all the traffic will be uh, automatically rerouted to your another availability zone so that's what they are saying here so if they are asking you questions can we force a failover from one availability zone to the another by rebooting your instance uh, is it true or false in aws devops itself you can try it as true so after this availability zones we are going to see what are read replicas read replicas are nothing that uh, making uh, a data a copying a data in another um, resource just for reading purpose and you cannot access the data just you can, you can access and read the data and you cannot pro process the data in that location so read replicas make it easy to take advantage of supported engines built in replication functionality to elastically scale out beyond the capacity constraints of a single db instance for heavy for read heavy database for read heavy database loads you can make use of these read replicas so read only copies of a database you can create a read replica with a few clicks in aws management console or using the create db instance read replicas api so once the read replica is created database updates on the source db will be replicated using a supported engine native asynchronous replication so it will keep on replicating you can create multiple read replicas for a given source of db instance and distribute your application read traffic among them and you can distribute your application read traffic uh, among those read replicas from the primary so when a read replica is used is scaling beyond the compute or input output capacity of a single db instances for read heavy database loads so um, scaling beyond the compute or input output capacity of a single db instance for read heavy database loads this excess read traffic can be directed to one or more replicas serving uh, i think so you understood this scaling beyond the computer or input output capacity of a single db instance for read heavy database loads if you are getting a database read database traffic you can uh, redirect or reroute the read uh, database traffic to more read replicas so serving read traffic while the resource while the source db instance is unavailable so if the source uh, if the primary db instances are unavailable these read replicas um, can use for reading your databases if your source database instance cannot take input or output you can direct uh, read uh, read traffic to the read replicas if your db primary db instances is uh, cannot uh, take the um, input output request for example due to io suspension for backups or scheduled maintenance you can redirect the traffic and business reporting or data warehousing scenarios so business reporting or data warehousing scenarios is 
you may want business reporting to run against the read replica rather than your primary production db instances so we are going so uh, we are going to see how to configure auto scaling in this video so kindly have a note of this video and be conscious that you are going to uh, write that you are going to you are going for devops preparation and these topics and this video will be very useful for your devops preparation
Yeah, uh, that's all guys for today's auto configuration and auto scaling. Uh, but and we'll be uh, giving you more topics that are related to DevOps examination tomorrow. And the class session is over today. Thanks. I shall power you there. Okay, Shilpa. I'll leave the session and I'll be sending you the PPT tomorrow.